From your home to City Hall. From your neighborhood to the White House. From your city to the world and beyond. This is Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Good evening, Alpha City. This is Craig Allen with today's top stories. The new hero known as A-Flower, the Lady of Peace, appeared again in Alpha City last night, bringing a gang of would-be bank robbers to justice. As usual, A-Flower did not use violence to stop the theft, but simply convinced the thieves to turn themselves into authorities rather than commit the crime as they had planned. Hagen Expressway is down to two lanes today, as cleanup of yesterday's battle between Captain Stupendous and Tin Lizzie continues. Alpha City Department of Public Works statement is that the cleanup and repair work is on a 24-hour schedule and should take no more than two days. Snow and ice have covered the South Baker neighborhood following Cryos the Coldbringer's attack on an apartment apparently occupied by his ex-wife. The team of ice pick and burnout captured the Coldbringer with little apparent trouble and are now helping with the removal of the unseasonable buildup which is also aided by the warm mid-70s temperature of the rest of Alpha City. The reappearance of the heroine Radiant is a cause for cautious celebration today. Radiant, wearing her well-known red and gold outfit, was spotted this morning helping Alpha City firefighters save civilians trapped by a fire on the upper floors of the Simon Building. Hero watchers may remember that Radiant has been missing since the Battle of Kirby Park two and a half years ago, when she was instrumental in repelling the invasion of the shape-shifting Catan. In light of the history the Catan have of masquerading as heroes, some questions have already arisen as to whether or not it is actually Radiant. I think I speak for the whole city when I say that if it is a Catan spy, we all hope that it is unmasked and sent packing quickly, tail between its legs. Otherwise, I'd say it was good to see one of our most beloved heroines return. Restaurant Row saw another gala opening last night, as celebrity chef Barker Clowey hosted the first seating at Basidion, his latest high-end, mushroom-centric eatery. The night was singular not only because Clowey himself prepared the dishes for both seatings held, but also for the presence of Clowey's partner in the new venture, John Maldif. Maldif, though now known as the producer of exceptional quality mushrooms, was, in the 1970s, the villain known as Toadstool John, the Mushroom Man. Espousing the belief that mushrooms were a superior organism to man, the Mushroom Man attempted several times to remove humans from Alpha City so that mushrooms could achieve their, quote, rightful place in the ecosphere, unquote. Along with the subterranean and the cockroach, two other villains with a vendetta against humanity in general, Maldif was able to gain control of the city for three days in September of 1979. The only member of the so-called terror trio apprehended, he spent much of the next decade in prison before being released in 1988 for good behavior. In the years since, he has lived quietly, cultivating his beloved mushrooms and building a reputation amongst Alpha City gourmets as the man to see for top quality edible fungi. The humble mushroom has always been one of my favorite foodstuffs with which to experiment, Clowey said last night. As I began to create Basidiome this past year, it was inconceivable I would proceed without consulting John. There is no one I would trust more to recommend and cultivate the ingredients I require for this endeavor. The more we spoke, the more obvious it became that John should be a partner in this, rather than simply a consultant. He was kind enough to agree, and now my dream has reached fruition. Maldif said, Barker Clowey has been a great customer of mine for years. His love for my children rivals my own, and his enthusiasm was infectious. To be allowed to share my life's passion, and in some small way enliven the city I once sought to destroy, is a great gift. In lighter news, the Blue Bear has been arrested again, this time for pestering a senior citizen. Martha Graham, 65, was taking a short break outside the building in which she worked yesterday when the Blue Bear approached her, accusing her of being his nemesis, the lollygagger. He then spent several minutes hectoring the septuagenarian, accusing her of flouting Alpha City law by lollygagging in a clearly marked no-loitering zone. 
Miss Graham took the Blue Bear's diatribe in good humor until he attempted to move her along physically, at which point the plucky lady struck him several times about the head and shoulders with her handbag. Alpha City Police Officer Phineas O'Toole, coming upon the scene, separated the two, and, upon discovering the facts of the situation, escorted the Blue Bear to the local police precinct. The Blue Bear, also known as James Nieder, 43, remained at the precinct until his mother, Moira Nieder, arrived to escort her son to their shared home. Mrs. Nieder assured Officer O'Toole that she would not allow James to leave the house without having taken his medication again. Miss Graham did not press any charges and allowed the matter to drop. The normally quiet air of the Sienkiewicz Museum of Modern Art was today disrupted by the appearance of the Society for the Enforcement of Normalcy and Rightness. Society members took various actions throughout the museum, with the man in the gray flannel suit placing copies of himself in front of dozens of paintings and exhibits, snidely denigrating their themes and execution. Mr. Jones, speeding through the building, covering the walls with graffiti, insulting the intelligence of the art patrons in attendance. Comstock and Bowdler throwing sheets over anything they considered immoral, including an empty table in the cafe. And Mrs. Grundy, the society's leader, arousing an angry mob just outside the museum with a diatribe against the immoral and unseemly items contained within. The final member, the hysterical woman, ran in circles, screaming, Won't someone please think of the children? Before any real damage could be done, however, the Legion of Odd entered the scene, and the strange heroes made short work of the bombastic critics. The one-man dance crew engaged the angry mob in a recreation of Michael Jackson's Beat It video choreography, while shambling Betty... Beautiful Smiles, and Mini Moose corralled Jones, Comstock at Bowdler, and the man in the gray flannel suit. Herr Dr. Odd himself managed to calm the hysterical woman and contain Mrs. Grundy. Herr Dr. Odd gave a short statement to the press, asking that the society be treated humanely, as their actions were spurred more by fear than by hatred. As always, Herr Dr. Odd was impossible to describe, looking exactly as you wouldn't expect him to, although all who saw him agreed he was wearing an eye patch. The vandalism to the museum is expected to be cleared in time for it to reopen tomorrow. A group of schoolchildren on their morning bus ride to PS 192 took a detour today, as their bus driver revealed himself to be Kid Imp, the magical incarnation of youthful play. The young sprite changed the tires of the bus into chicken legs, which carried the delighted children on a mad dash around the Red Bank neighborhood. It was only a short time, however, before both Captain Stupendous and Presto the Witch ended the imp's fun. After chasing down the bus and chastising Kid Imp, both the captain and Presto took pictures with their starstruck children. This is the best day ever, said 11-year-old Billy Morgan. We missed two classes. Captain Stupendous said he's going to fly the bus back to school, and presto kissed me. The good captain was as good as his word, carrying the children and their bus off on his muddy shoulders, while presto took charge of Kid Imp, and was heard saying that his mother was going to hear about his mischief. On a side note, this is the third time in as many months that Captain Stupendous and Presto have worked together, and some say that there is a super-powered romance in the offing. Only time will tell, Alpha City. Reports have come in that the phenomenon known as the Burst, which signaled the hero Empyrean's victory over the Deep One in orbit last week, have caused some who witnessed it to suffer a number of different effects, ranging from temporary blindness to otherworldly visions, slight precognition, low-level telepathic broadcasting and reception, the ability to speak with some animals, possession by intelligences described as vast, cool, and unsympathetic, color blindness, seeing colors previously unknown to man, possession by intelligences described as happy, fuzzy, and unsympathetic, and unstoppable twerking. All effects so far have been temporary, but Empyrean is working with state and federal officials, as well as magic-based heroes Presto and the Red Warlock, to remove the most pernicious effects quickly. All who have experienced such effects are requested to make themselves known, even if you aren't interested in having whatever effect you've experienced removed. 
More information can be found on the Hero Union website, including a list of locations where examinations will be held, contact phone numbers for those who aren't able to make it to a test site, and a list of the effects considered to have been brought on by the burst. We'll have more information on this story as it develops. This just in. Dr. Metronome has struck again, looting the First National Bank with his gang of TikTok men. Heroine Jackie Quick attempted to stop the crime, only to be turned into a mechanical version of herself by Metronome's Clockwork Ray. Unfortunately, she did not notice that her new form was run by a wind-up key on her back until it began to run down as she fought with the TikTok men. By the time police managed to wind her back to full speed, Metronome and his gang had vanished. Jackie Quick remained in her clockwork form for almost five minutes before reverting to human form. When asked, she said she would apprehend Metronome and return the money, although she would first consult with the Bright Man on a way to avoid or neutralize the Clockwork Ray. Roman the Human Robot was in attendance at the Innsmouth home for the Slightly Mad today, as Troubled Heiress Alpaca Tuesday was released, following six months of intense therapy. She was remanded to the home after her capture by Roman, when Miss Tuesday's second personality, Vanilla Wednesday, attempted to steal the Ruritanian crown jewels. Miss Tuesday's attending therapist, Dr. Morton Throckmorton, said there was now very little chance that Vanilla would reemerge. Both Roman and Miss Tuesday agreed, briefly posing for pictures, before Miss Tuesday was whisked off to her family's mountain retreat to complete her recuperation. It was an odd day today at City Hall, as Tricky Dick arrived to throw his hat in the ring for the upcoming Alpha City mayoral election. Yes, Rick Tricky Dick Noxon, only months after completing his last sentence in Maryvale Penitentiary, told reporters that he has reformed, and now intends to repay the city for his crimes by leading it to a new era of prosperity. When asked what exactly he would do to that end, Mr. Noxon tapped his nose and said slyly, Now boys, I can't be giving out my best ideas where my opponents might hear them, now can I? All in good time, boys. All in good time. Mr. Noxon seemed taken aback, however, when Anders Brightman, known in the hero world as the Bright Man, suddenly appeared as if out of nowhere. Tricky Dick offered the bright man his hand and, as cameras caught the former adversary's shaking hands, expressed the hope that there were no hard feelings for his past actions, and said he wished to work with the bright man to better Alpha City. The bright man replied, I will gladly work with any duly elected city official to that end. I will be watching this election quite closely, rest assured. After the bright man had taken his leave, Noxon was seen massaging his hand, and commented that the bright man had quite a grip. And now the scorecard for the past week. The tracker from Titan returned to Earth, warning of a coming invasion by the Titanian Methane Men. Mechanical Bill defeated the Rust Brothers, ending their scheme to hold the Fifth Street Bridge for ransom. The Cleaner beat the Filthy Five when they attempted to contaminate the North Reservoir. Baby Hawking stopped Clockface from aging the Miss Alpha City contestants to old age. Rock Hardman, the hero, not the adult film actor, ended Domino O'Day's plan to cause the Simon Building to fall over, hoping to cause a chain of collapses. Snowman put the freeze on Mr. Thirteenth Floor. Punching Judy knocked down the bucket kicker. Jack of all trades went head-to-head -head with the Master of None in an inconclusive battle. Double Time and Slow Mo teamed up to stop the Timekeeper. The Chicken of Tomorrow and the Hyper Cow made a meal of the Vegan Destroyer. Structure, the Living Building, threw down with Battleship Potemkin. The Odd Squad dealt with Even Steven and the Calamity Cubes. Jetpack Jones grounded Helicoptera. Big Weird Joe took on both Beefsteak Tomato and Brick Red, but failed to capture either. Ironclad duked it out with the Monitor in Yancey River. Strange Attractor and the Free Radical shook up the homeostatic man. The Conundrum Corporation stopped an insidious plan by the Sons of Agartha. The High Frontiersmen matched wits with Hellbrain. Pale Blue Monday trounced the Bishop of the Holy Schism. The Semi-Automatic Sorcerer dealt with an infestation of Ludflowers. 
The girl with the key took down Lacrimose Johnson. Mando Church reined in the fifth horseman. Edwin Sherdlew danced with the painted lady and emerged victorious. Edison Rao shut down the devil's microwave. Mr. If nailed down Ibblestar and the Unhinged. And lastly, the unholy factory was reported to have appeared in a vacant lot in Bakersley, but an investigation by the repairman turned up nothing. This has been Alpha City News with Craig Allen. Produced by Carter Lee. Music beds were provided by IthacaAudio.com. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please contact us at alphacitynews at gmail.com.